And we're going to start off with a Thelonious Monk song. And he calls it Straight and No Chaser. For those of you who are drinkers, I guess you know what that really means. That means you uh, plan to do more than having a social drink if you want it without a chaser. So we're going to start off with a, a bright tune. Thank you. 
That is Salonian's Monk Straight and Road Chaser. Without any hesitation or further ado, Ms. Huxley Scott. This is the end of a beautiful friendship. It ended a moment ago. This is the end of a beautiful friendship. I know, cause your eyes told me so. We were always like sister and brother until tonight when we looked at each other and that was the end of a beautiful friendship and just the beginning of love. This is the end of a beautiful friendship. It ended a moment ago. This is A beautiful friendship, I know, cause your eyes told me so. We were always like sister and brother, until tonight we agreed to get each other. That was the end of a beautiful friendship, and just the
This is the end of a beautiful friendship. A moment ago. This is the end. in this society oh, I got a feeling that I'm just your style oh, be a sweet pumpkin and I will walk down the aisle just put your arms around me and you get plenty good love and just you wait and see you tell we were meant to be together. Wedding bells will be ours to ring forever. Let's make a booking to be man and wife. Say yes, good looking, and I'll share your life for to me. You are everything divine. Be a sweet pumpkin and say that you are
Everybody. Good afternoon, yeah. everyone, on this glorious day. And the weather beautiful yeah, today. It's yeah. like you put in the order and we got it. <laughs> um, I'm Elisa Evans Newsom, the executive director here at the museum. And uh, we at the museum wish to thank all of you for coming out today for Buy You to the Port Jazz Concert. Um, we'd also like to acknowledge and thank the following. Mr. Donald Cole and Mr. Ron Flagg, the two cohorts who organized this event. Mr. Eric Winbush of Dad's Productions, the sound man. The sound is magnificent, isn't it? Oh, perfect. Old Savannah City Mission for the comfortable chairs. Pianist Frank Bright, who provided the tent. And last but not least, Savannah's own Teddy Adams and Sextet, accompanied by another of Savannah's own jazz singer, Miss Hupsy Scott. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate you very much. Royal Tasty Plates food truck. <laughs> For them delicious oxtail quesadillas. Oh my God. So. I uh, have the privilege of visiting the Caribbean and the Caribbean, wherever your brothers are. Uh, I noticed over there that the people were happy. So the music was happy, and that made me enjoy my stay even more to the extent that I, I was inspired to write a song because of its influence. My eldest son's name is uh, Kelly, and he is a happy-go-lucky, fun-loving dude. So I combined my experience in the Caribbean with his personality and I came up with a Calypso and uh, Calypso is the name of the music and his name is Kelly so I kind of reworked Calypso and I call it Calypso <laughs> so this, his name is Kelly this is called Calypso Kelly and I'm going to let Robert open it up with uh, a nice rhythmic calypso beat to introduce the theme.
guys uh, in the band again before we take a short pause and Huxley will be back up for her second set. On flugel horn and trumpet, very fine trumpet player. He's the lead player in a band that I co-lead an orchestra, the Savannah Jazz Orchestra. And uh, presently on the bandstand, we've been playing together off and on for more than 30 years. Mr. Kirk Lee on trumpet and flugel horn. Yeah. Trumpet and flugel horn. Standing next to me, you know, I get, he gets tired of me doing this, but I, I enjoy doing it because uh, I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's a very fine trombone player. He's a little under the weather today. I invited him to play, but he, he was not up to playing, but he came to support anyway. He answers to the name of Andre Murchison. He's one of my mentees, and let me tell you a little about Andre. He's played with both the Count Basie and the Ellington Bands. He's played with the Scatter Lights, the oldest instrumental reggae band in existence. He's played with the Roy Hargrove Big Band. He's played with uh, uh, Monty Alexander. The list goes on and on. Very fine musician and composer. I told him, Andre, raise your hand over there so they'll see you. I'm sorry he didn't feel up to playing today because you're missing a treat. But when I told him there was a new guy in town, and I said, uh, the great saxophone player. He said, really? He said, what's his name? And I told him, he said, 
No, no, I said he's a great something else, okay? And he said, he was in music school with me. I said, well, I mean, I know he was a saxophone player, but he was introduced to me as Dr. Calvin Barr. So graduating from Oberlin College with a double major, one in jazz studies and the other pre-med, Dr. Calvin Barnes, a Yale graduate, <laughs> and a very fine musician. He, he can choose either of the two professions and, and be comfortable, okay? On Guys Stand By Me On Bass, equally as comfortable on this bandstand as he is with the Savannah Philharmonic. Mark Chesano, Mark Chesano. On piano, he's from a neighboring state, not a Savannian, but he's, he's originally from Columbia, South Carolina, and I really didn't know that Columbia had musicians of this caliber. The only other person I knew was a guy by the name of Chris Potter. I know he was a great musician, but this guy now lives in Charleston. He's played with some of the biggest names in jazz. Plus, he's also a very fine bass player. Jonathan Lovett. Jonathan Lovett on keyboard. The youngster in the group, he's getting older. You know, I say youngster, but he's catching up with me. He's my first call when I need a drummer that can do what I want, what I need. Mr. Robert Saunders. Robert Saunders. Let me information before I leave. Some of you, uh, hopefully, have bought and read my first book. It was entitled The Up or the Down Beat. It chronicled my life as a jazz musician, pays homage to Savannah, Georgia, and it just tells about some travels. I've traveled quite a bit and played with some pretty impressive musicians. I've just completed a sequel to that, and that book is called Keeping the Beat. And it's it's, it's a sequel to The Up of the Down Beat and somewhat of a legacy. This will probably be my first book. And it, 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 it mentions a few references from the last book with some new experiences in my life and some things that I forgot to put in the first book. It's on sale now at Barnes & Noble and, uh, and Amazon. So if you feel like you might be interested in what I've done. Uh, and I also have some copies myself. Keeping the beat. We're gonna take a short pause now and we'll start off the next set with Miss Huxley Scott. You have been a very attentive and appreciative audience and we appreciate that because the music that we play is serious music and I like for it to be appreciated. So thank you very much for listening. We'll do that shortly. We are going to start off with uh, a J.J. Johnson, uh, the guy that's doing the photography and videotaping, asked me during my interview which pool was one of my main influences. I'd have to say that J.J. Johnson was my second influence. My first influence was a guy by the name of Benny Green. Probably nobody knows about Benny Green other than Andre. <laughs> but he was uh, the first guy. And he came to Savannah years when I was a child, I didn't see him. But he was the first guy I heard because he played great and I felt that I had the capability of playing like him. And I heard J.J. Johnson and I thought about giving the trombone up. He's, he's the revolutionist when it comes to modern trombone playing, doing the bebop era especially. But he wrote he was a great trombone player, he was a great arranger, he was a great composer. And one of his tunes he wrote was called Concepts in Blue. Concepts in Blue. And I hadn't heard that, but a very dear friend of mine, he's now deceased, a very fine trumpet player, by the name of Stubby Mitchell. He heard this tune and said, man, I, one, of, one of your favorite players got something I want to play. He, he was a trumpet player, but he called my attention to this song and uh, I've been playing it ever since. Concepts in blue.
Lee Morgan, calling Miss Khadija. In a few minutes.
the tears you wiped it dry I was confused you cleared my mind I sold my soul you bought it back for me and held me up and gave dignity somehow you needed me you gave me strength to stand alone again to face the world out on my own again you placed me high up on a pedestal so high that I could almost see eternity you needed me you needed me I can't believe it's you I can't believe that it's true I needed you and you were there why should I leave I never leave I'd be a 
a whole another direction. This song has to have a disclaimer. It does not necessarily reflect my views or the views of anybody up here. I am just singing a song. I didn't choose the names. I didn't choose any of that stuff. Actually, the person who wrote this song also wrote, it's an old, old song you wouldn't remember, 100 Pounds of Clay. Anybody remember that song? His name was Gene McDaniel. And um, he wrote this song. Here we go. This is a song about a very big, strong, sexy, southern man of the cloth who thinks that he's got his program all together, but he runs up against somebody who shows him that he doesn't. Reverend Lee, he went to the water and he prayed to the Lord about old Satan's daughter. It seems a dream while he lay sleeping, looked up and there she was in his bed. She was twisting and turning and the girl was begging and pleading. Somebody said the child was burning. Somebody heard her breathing. Reverently, she said, Lord. Above you, never believed. He lifted his arms high. He said, Heavenly Father, oh, take me home to the skies. Please don't tell me not where this girl has touched. Oh, 
interesting story, isn't it? Moral of that story is, if you play with fire, you will get burned. Bottom line. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I see skies of blue, clouds of white, bright blue days and warm sacred nights, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, are on the faces of people going by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. I hear babies cry, and I watch them grow. They will learn much more than I will ever know. And I think to myself, what the wonderful Right. 
Thank you very much. For the faithful few who remain, thank you very much. It's been a very beautiful evening. I'm sorry more people were here because the day was perfect and I thought the music was great and I thought the audience was very appreciative. On behalf of the group, on behalf of the group, and we would like to thank the African American Museum of Arts for doing this for the second year and they plan to do it annually and it's free and open to the public. So remember, sometimes next year, it will be happening, just watch the news. Ms. Zuxi Scott on vocal. Kirk Leo on trumpet and flugel horn. Calvin Bond, alto and tenor saxophone. Jonathan Lovett on piano. Robert Saunders on drum. Mark Chesano on bass. My name is Teddy Adams and thank you very much.